Mary Barra has revealed that she has a plan for General Motors to double its revenue to $280 billion a year. And the way she's going to do it is by changing General Motors from a car company to Tesla. I mean, pretty much that's what she just said. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Great to have you. And welcome back, everyone else. Just want to say thank you for helping us hit 100 million views over the past two years, 24 months. Uh, it's been an amazing disruption. This disruption is incredible. General Motors are clearly being affected by it. They're hoping and planning. In fact, they have a new strategy, which I revealed in a video recently, to manufacture potentially hundreds of thousands of electric cars in China. No one wants to buy them in China, though. That's the thing. They do want to buy EVs, just not from General Motors. So what GM's plan is, is to sell those electric cars it manufactures in China, in Australia, Southeast Asia, uh, Europe, all the places where General Motors had previously really given up on, just not North America. In North America, it will manufacture EVs themselves. That said, though, the beginning of this year, GM said it would meet some incredibly ambitious EV targets. And, well, there's precisely 0% chance of any of those targets coming anywhere near close to fruition. That said, General Motors has claimed many times, Mary Barrow particularly, that the company would surpass Tesla in 2025 in terms of total electric car sales. They're being very quiet on that. They've been asked a few times recently if they're still planning to do that, and they're no longer committing to that idea. They're now saying, well, maybe 2026, can, can we... Can we Fast forward, can we just jump forward another year? I mean, I'm going to guess by the time 2025 comes around, they'll say, well, what about 2027? Can we take that year? Is that year taken? Anyway, Mary Barra's ambitious plan to double General Motors revenue to $280 billion by the end of the decade has a simple premise. Turn General Motors into Tesla. Turn it into a technology company. And I'm serious. General Motors wants to make a lot of things Tesla's making now. I'm talking energy products energy storage, having an entire network system, having HVAC systems, having all kinds of different services, which are pretty much in the realm of Tesla today. Technology instead of automotive business. That's how General Motors believes it can transform the company, but not only transform the company, transform its share price. If you'd bought General Motors 20 years ago, you'd be very poor. I mean, honestly, you would have lost a lot of money. There's just no way about it. If you bought it 10 years ago, the same thing would apply. Keep in mind, you have to include the value of inflation. A dollar today is not what a dollar was 20 years ago. And GM stock price is actually lower than what it was uh, about 10 or 15 years ago. Anyhow, Barra, who's the CEO of General Motors and makes more money than a, any other CEO in the automotive industry in terms of salary, except for, of course, um, Elon Musk, although his money is more based on compensation if the company meets certain targets. And, of course, Peter Rawlinson, the CEO of Lucid, who just uh, he just made $400 million. I don't know how that was possible considering the company's losing $50,000 on every EV it sells. But anyhow, this week, the CEO of Cruise Automation was found out. And I mean that in a very real way. And I, feel, I personally feel defrauded. I actually did believe uh, that Cruise Automation, their robo-taxis worked. I, I think we all thought they worked. They were driving around with no drivers in them. We all thought they worked. But it turns out around every three miles, person has to jump in to make a decision for that so-called robo-taxi. And they're being basically tracked 24 hours a day, every single minute by people in an office uh, who then take over every few miles to make a decision. Now, we didn't know that. And as a result of that disclosure, the CEO has stood down. GM's autonomous vehicle company doesn't seem all that autonomous after all. And this was after a series of other high profile accidents and missteps, which included um, hitting a pedestrian and then dragging it under the car for about 10 meters. When I say it, I should say dragging a person under the car for about 10 meters. This was a remarkable setback for a company that just two years ago was projected to bring in 50 billion US dollars in revenue in only six years time, according to an investment presentation in the company. Now Mary Barra is pulling back on growth plans for the robo-taxi unit to make sure the cars are safe. Well, because she's been forced to by regulators who have removed them from the roads. However, the company now says that achieving the milestones that they had aimed for with GM's crews is next to impossible. Barra has staked her leadership 
on a multi-billion dollar plan to grow GM after decades of downsizing. And really what GM has done is move out of markets where they were losing money. Australia, there's no General Motors here. It's the same in many other countries. To fund her vision, she closed down underperforming overseas business units, leaving markets in Europe and Asia to the likes of Toyota and Volkswagen, while pouring money into the potential vehicles of the future, electric cars. Analysts applauded Barra's plan, but developing new technologies is not really something GM are known for. It's not their strength. There's a big difference between strategy and execution, said Sam Abel Samid, research analyst at Guyenhouse Insights. They just have not been able to build the batteries, and they took their eye off the ball with Cruise. Jim Kane, a spokesperson for General Motors, said in an email, we haven't changed our long-term targets, but our immediate focus is on the 2023 to 2025 timeframe, when we will be scaling EV production and advancing our growth initiatives. But here's the thing. Some analysts say GM has focused on growth over safety. Amid regulatory problems and safety issues, Cruise paused its driverless taxi operations while an outside law firm and a technology consultant review the business. Insiders say Cruise CEO Kyle Vogt, who Barra appointed after firing its previous leader, Dan Amarin, pushed for growth too fast. Voigt didn't respond to requests for comment from the media. In June of last year, two incidents in Cruz's test market, San Francisco, had some internal managers questioning whether or not the rubber taxis, well, actually worked. First, a Toyota Prius, which according to police reports was speeding, crashed into a Cruz car. I don't personally think that some of these incidents that have happened have been the fault of GM's rubber taxis, but it's hard to know. Then a dozen, as in 12 cruise vehicles, all drove to one bizarre particular location, stopped, blocked the intersection, and had a bit of a party together. This led to a recall of the cars for a software upgrade. Undeterred, the company next month announced Cruise would enter Phoenix and Austin. At the time, Voigt said in an interview with Bloomberg News that the technology was very safe, and the only barrier was how quickly General Motors could build the cars. The technology works. There are people using it, said Voigt. But then he went on to say, we're putting cars in the cities. Now we just have to build more of them. Voigt told executives internally that Cruz had to establish a customer base in metropolitan cities before Google's Waymo self-driving unit could get in there and take the market, much like Uber did in its race against Lyft to dominate ride-sharing. To meet that goal, Cruise started referring to meet that goal. Cruise started softening internal safety review metrics, according to people familiar with the company. Whenever the company was going to expand hours of operation, the number of vehicles driving or its geography, Cruise conducted what it called launch readiness reviews. A dozen different metrics had to be green to get the go ahead. But Voigt started bending the rules, the people said. Cruise cars would occasionally run through caution tape around construction sites or safety zones. Voigt decided that was okay, not a big deal, no, as long as it didn't happen too often. Past employees said Voigt was known for overriding opposing views from subordinates. Basically, uh, he was quite aggressive to meeting the targets. Voigt also wanted General Motors to start building more of the crew's origin, a six-seat passenger autonomous van with no steering wheel or control pedals. And this was before the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration had approved it. Cruise hoped to have 2,500 of them this year and 60,000 large electric vans on the road in only two years' time. General Motors would make only a few test models until the NHTSA approved the vehicles for the roads. A year after the incidents in 2022, the California Public Utilities Commission voted to allow crews to charge fares at all hours of the day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it appeared as though Cruise was on track for some major successes. In October, a Cruise vehicle seriously injured a pedestrian. Later that month, Cruise paused operations. At its peak, it had 400 robo taxis on the road in San Francisco alone. Previous Cruise CEO, Aman, had taken a much more cautious approach having delayed the company's original goal to provide robo-taxi services by the end of 2019. Barra fired him because of disagreements over strategy. He was taking too long. 
and whether to take the company public. Aman hasn't responded to requests for comment either. Some crew staff circulated an image of an orange t-shirt this week that says, Dan was right, with a picture of a sheep since Aman hails from wool producing New Zealand. While General Motors still sees value in robotaxis, the company's plans are now to move more slowly. It really doesn't have a lot of choice. Cruise will make sure its technology is safe and that it has proper controls in place to monitor the vehicles, a person familiar with the company said, but no one really knows how long it will take Cruise to really truly have robo taxis because it appears the ones that were on the road in the past were, well, not really doing what they said they were. Barra's electric car ambitions are even more pivotal to doubling revenue. In February, the CEO said 2023 would be GM's breakout year for EVs, but that didn't happen. The company has only sold thousands of its newest EVs and Barra will miss her EV revenue target, according to a person familiar with the plans. GM's Silverado electric truck, the most important electric vehicle for the company in history, has been officially paused until 2025. The automaker is on pace to grow revenue by 12% this year to $175 billion, and that's despite a six-week strike. But that's far from the strength of its legacy business. By now, GM said it would be selling 20 different EV models in markets around the globe, raking in $10 billion in new revenue from those alone. It's only selling 15 globally, period, and only a few in the US. Even those, many of those, are in very limited numbers. Production snags have kept potential customers waiting too long. Many of them have canceled orders and just bought something else. GM's battery cell plant in Ohio is now up and running. The pack plant, the one where they put the cells into the battery packs in Michigan, has had a lot of trouble with the automation that was supposed to assemble the packs. And workers are doing it by hand, which is taking way too long. GM will press ahead with its battery ambitions. It has also purchased President Joe Biden's incentives for EV makers and global regulations will help make it a reality. But long-term investment in self-driving cars will have to earn their keep. Many may retire in the next couple of years, he said. The next CEO may not want to spend billions a year on autonomy. But GM thinks it has an ace up its sleeve. It has decided to directly compete with Tesla head on. It wants to transform the business to automate everything as much as it can, to reduce its staff and its dependence on, well, manual labor, something that Tesla is very good at. It wants to make things faster. It wants to make its vehicle platforms basically computers on wheels in a similar way to what Tesla has done. In fact, it's gone so far to kind of copy and beat Tesla at its own game that it just purchased the main company who's helped Tesla with its gigacasting, doesn't plan on even using gigacasting for its EVs? I have no idea. But it definitely believes that it can take on Tesla. Whether or not that's true, though, is, well, I don't know. It's anyone's guess. I guess it's possible, but is it possible for General Motors, who are a traditional legacy automotive company that moves very slowly? Is that the kind of company that really can take on a fast moving EV brand like Tesla? What are your thoughts on that? Let me know in the comments. Bye-bye.